We all use tech of some kind every day in our lives. People have always used tech. It's just part of our programming. And that goes for whether it's old or new, low tech or high tech, or maybe a little bit of both of those things. In this video, it's going to be of the newish variety, but not the very latest. And let's be honest, most of us don't have all of the latest stuff. It just, it doesn't work like that. We use what we have for as long as it's useful or until it breaks. I'm Mendo Dave, and this is Everyday Tech. Back in October of last year, this is just last year, 2019, Apple released Mac OS Catalina, and I was excited. It had some improvements and new features, just like every other release does. But there was one feature that I was really excited about, and that was Sidecar. And as excited as the kid is in me about this Sidecar, it's another kind of Sidecar I'll be talking about in this video. The free Sidecar. Well, almost free. What is Apple Sidecar? It's a way to use your iPad as a second monitor without plugging anything in and allows you to spread out your desktop without buying a second dedicated monitor. Pretty good deal. But there's a catch. Even though many Macs are able to upgrade to Catalina, Apple disabled the sidecar feature for many older Macs and iPads. There are a lot of theories as to why they did that, including one that I hear thrown around that Apple just wants you to spend more money by buying newer stuff. That's a common theme, especially from detractors. My theory is that the older hardware just won't work very satisfactorily with this screen casting feature. And so it's been disabled on the older hardware, like on my late 2012 Mini with its duo core processor. I mean, when's the last time that you heard about duo core being thrown around? It's getting pretty old. And I get it. It isn't just Apple. Even Zoom requires a four core or better processor to join a video chat. So for some things, my Mac is just old, kind of like me. Nevertheless, I heard on Reddit that there were some patches on GitHub that would fix the issue. It was described on GitHub that there was a simple device blacklist and a simple workaround that involved an edit to that list. Someone had posted up a command line instruction string that you could paste into the TCSH terminal and that would fix the blacklist, but that's been patched by Apple a while ago in a minor update. So that doesn't work anymore. The other method involves a risky software patch and a more complicated procedure involving a few restarts and hoping for the best, which will probably end up being patched later on anyway. And as I continue to read, um, sometimes you still needed to plug the monitor in or things didn't quite work so well. Sounded pretty iffy. Now, if I had a spare machine around, this would be a thing to do. But we're running our business and part of our lives on this old Mac, and I'm not interested in breaking it. So, it seems that the sidecar party is dead. Or is it? I found a product from a company called Luna Display. They offer a Festivus for the rest of us. So yeah, the party is on, dudes. It's a simple hardware solution that plugs into either a USB-C port or the mini display port on the back of your computer. And that's the one that I bought, and it costs just $49. It took about a week to arrive, but it finally showed up in this padded envelope. Once I got it out of the box, the setup was really easy. It took just 10 minutes to set it all up. There's a Luna app for each device, and once you open those up, after a couple of screen flickers, 
the Luna display works quite well. I wasn't able to run LumaFusion on the Mac desktop to get that larger experience, but that's okay, because why would I want to? All the video editing power is on the iPad anyway. But I can move any other app that's on the Mac over to the iPad. That's been my experience so far. And I guess that's the thing. The iPad is a second display for the Mac. If I wanted a larger display for the iPad, I could just plug one into the USB-C port. The Hot Corners feature doesn't work well in the Luna display mode. I use that for a couple of things including invoking multiple workspaces, but you can still invoke workspaces, or desktops as I like to call them, using mission control on the desktop. Now the action is actually much smoother than this. The lagging that you see is actually the optical mouse having a hard time keeping up with the smooth service on my desktop, and I don't have a trackpad, so that's what that's all about. If I move it to a different spot on the desktop, it works just fine, but this one area is just dark and super glossy and, well, the thing has a hard time. This is going to work out just fine for me. I can put a few, few things over on the side while I work in the main screen on the Mac and not have applications nested and buried behind one another. But of course, since Apple has developed a native sidecar of their own for the newer machines, Luna Display is going to have to come up with something else before long. So if you have an unsupported Mac, just get this and save yourself the hassle of trying to set up an iffy software patch to work. And that's all I've got about this, so okay, see you next time. Later.